Hours after that shooting happened, we also heard from President Obama. He appeared upset, even angry, as he addressed the tragic events in Oregon, saying mass shootings have become somewhat routine in this country. Let's check in with uh, Brandy Cruz now, and uh, President Obama renewing his call for lawmakers to pass new gun control measures. And, and I think what, what really struck a chord with a lot of people is when he called them common sense mm -hmm. gun control measures. Well, and what does that mean? And you can understand yeah. some of the president's frustration and people's frustration with him. I mean, he has now 15 times since he's been in office, stood up and essentially gave the same speech after 15 different mass shootings. Uh, let's listen to a little bit of what the president had to say. Our thoughts and prayers are not enough. It's not enough. It does not capture the heartache and grief and anger that we should feel. And it does nothing to prevent this carnage from being inflicted someplace else in America. It cannot be this easy for somebody who wants to inflict harm on other people to get his or her hands on a gun. And what's become routine, of course, is the response of those who oppose any kind of common sense gun legislation. Right now, I can imagine the press release is being cranked out. We need more guns, they'll argue. Fewer gun safety laws. Does anybody really believe that? President Obama talking specifically to the NRA there with that comment. Yeah, and I think he's touching on something that I think is striking a chord with a lot of a lot of people. The idea that this has become numb, you know, that people are becoming numb to this. We want to bring in Dr. Gregory yeah. Jantz joining us this morning uh, to talk about this tragic shooting. First, is it true that people are becoming numb? As you know, the president said, this is kind of routine well, at this point, which is really sad. But numb, or we're so traumatized we don't know what to do with it. And so, if I'm overly traumatized, I have no place to put that. Therefore, it almost becomes normalized. And how do we deal with that? Because if we have so many mass right. shootings in this country, and what you really need to spark change, and we know this from other events, what you need to spark change is outrage in a sense. So if we're becoming numb to it, and the mm -hmm. outrage is diminishing over things like this, how do we actually affect change? Well, you know, somebody's going to need to make a decision that this is no longer okay. And it's a whole cultural shift. It is a shift also for uh, how we perceive guns in our society. And it's going to take some time. Yeah, and, and we live in, in a gun culture. It is yes. in our Constitution, Absolutely. the right to bear arms, the, the Second Amendment. And it brings up a really interesting conversation. I mean, what would happen if you decided to not, as some suggest, go after the mentally ill? Let's, let's right. identify them, get them the help, and make sure that they're not getting access to guns. What if the country took guns away altogether? They actually did that in Australia back in 1996. They had a, a new town kind of an event. Right. Where where the entire nation was completely outraged. Within 12 days, state and federal leaders proposed, voted on, and passed new legislation that restricted and prohibited the, the sales of guns. They, they literally were taking guns away from their people, and it actually worked. Um, the firearm-related deaths in that country plummeted. Mass shootings became largely a thing of the past. Now, it's a very different gun culture in Australia. I mean, that, that is a given. In this country, 60% uh, of murders in the U.S. are committed with a gun uh, compared to 11% in Australia. And on that subject, mm -hmm. you know, how do we, and it's true, you know, mm -hmm. we have the Second Amendment. We do have a different kind of setup right. than, than they do in Australia. I don't and know that you can really take guns away. very powerful National Rifle Right, but how can you kind of change, what is it going to take if it doesn't take kids getting killed at Sandy Hook or all of these mass shootings. I mean, we had since 2004, mm -hmm. from 2004 to 2013, more than 300,000 people in this country have been killed by gun mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a huge number. So what does it take? It's such a passionate issue on either side of it. So what would it take to change someone's opinion, their strongly held opinion about guns in this country? Yes, what would it take? It's a whole shift in not only in culture, but how we perceive guns. We get to a point where we've seen enough is enough, and we've got to make that shift. Now, one of the things that happens is those that are dangerous with the guns, which is not everybody, those are the folks we've got to get attention to, but we've got to decide what are we going to do with guns in our culture? Our society, yes, it's been deep roots into our society. I understand that. But this isn't working. 
So certainly more, a more comprehensive approach than just saying gun control. I mean, it sounds like we have a whole thing to look at culturally and also when it comes to, you know, maybe people who do have um, significant yes. mental issues, which we know isn't to, all To identify them and, and, and identify in your realm, them. you see these people. No. Oh, we do, we do. So you're saying that there's a type of profile that these people all have, but, but how do you... You can't arrest someone for having thoughts. Sure. How, do, how, do you, how do you wrap yourself around You know, there that? are people who have destruction fantasies that never act out. Uh, we can identify profiles and patterns and identify mental illness. That we can do. But what we don't know is what they're going to do. And we can't predict when. But there are escalating warning signs. And we've seen that here in the recent shooting. So we want to look at, yes, there are folks that need help. And we can't ignore that. Most of the times we sit back and go, okay, yeah, I guess he had problems, but we knew it beforehand. Right. Yeah, we, we, we keep hearing that. Dr. So James, thank you. Brandy. Yeah, okay.